Happy 13th birthday, jewellery maker. Happy birthday! Happy 13th birthday, jewellery maker. I can't wait uh, to share the celebrations and some cake with you guys. Tune in for the epic deals that we've got in store for you. Uh, and happy birthday once again. Hi, my name's Susie Mellon, and I just want to wish jewellery maker a very happy 13th birthday. Mwah. I'm Monica Shortes and I'm here to show you how to um, use one of the items in our birthday box. First of all, happy birthday jewellery maker. Uh, it's a 13th birthday, isn't it fabulous? So I'm lucky enough to have been given box number eight to work with. Um, so I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to open the box and show you what's in box number eight and then I will show you what we can do with it. So let's open the box. It's very exciting and I'm very tempted to look in the other boxes, but I've been told I'm not allowed. <laughs> So number eight is over here. So we open number eight. And then inside, I've got a big, big bundle of goodies in here. So what do we have? Well, we've got a little organza baggie, which is always great to have, isn't it, for gifting or if you're selling your jewelry or just to keep your own jewelry in it, to be honest. Okay, so we're gonna take out what's in our little baggie. We'll put that aside for now. So we've got lots and lots of sparkly colours here, as you can see. Let me get it out of the bag. Lots to work with in this bundle. Right, so we've got a strand, two metre long strand, so not just a little strand, a whole two metres of four millimetre crystal bicones in just about every colour you can imagine. Let me just move these out of the way for a second. So it's super, super sparkly. I mean, you can see, if I just move it a little bit, you can see all the sparkle you've got there and you've got every color you can imagine in here. I mean, this is such a versatile strand to use, uh, especially with your seed beading. But even if you just want to use it as spaces, it just adds a bit of sparkle to your jewelry, um, accents, it, it can add a bit of color to whatever you, you're making. But obviously I love it with seed beading because, and by cones, the four, the four millimeter bicones are your most useful accent for your seed beading because um, they're just the right size to sort of fit into your seed beading really neatly without overtaking your piece because they're not that big uh, to sort of overtake your, your seed beading. But they're also um, small enough to kind of switch, fit in really nicely and really accent your seed beading. So especially if you're doing stitches like peyote stitch where you sort of want to embed something in there, um, they work really well. But for this piece that I've made using these, because um, obviously I had a, a strand beforehand to make a piece of jewellery with, um, the colours just inspired me to do something really summery and floral. I mean, you've got so many beautiful colours in here. Um, so I decided to make a necklace that kind of reminds me of uh, all the summer flowers that we're going to be seeing soon. Um, so you can see on the, on the one side, I've only put flowers on the one side, there are enough um, beads in the strand to cover the whole necklace in flowers if you wanted to do that. Um, but I just went for the one side so you could still see the other side uh, where the plain green is, which kind of reminds me of the leaves on the trees and the, and the, and the bushes. And, and I've used the crystal clear um, bicones here, which kind of reminded me of little drops of water or dew. So that, that was my inspiration behind this necklace. And then of course the flowers are all made individually and then added on to the, the, the base, which is the same as the other side. Um, and then if I turn it around, you can see it carries on to the back. And then I've just put a little extension chain on there and a little clasp. So that's what I will be showing you how to make. Okay. So um, it's made of several different components, um, two techniques basically. The first one we're gonna do, we're gonna make the base uh, using some netting. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to make the flowers, which I've made individually, all the flowers, and then attach them to the necklace um, afterwards, because it just gives you a bit of freedom to 
um, to sort of arrange them how you want and to work out the colours where you want to put them and all of that, um, rather than having to sort of do it all in one, one go. So I'm going to put the flowers aside for a second. So this netting um, is basic netting, but it's, it's not straight netting. So it's actually on a diagonal like that. Okay, if you've ever done any netting before, you can see you've got your, your lines going up and down kind of like that. Because I wanted to make um, a necklace. Now, normally when you do a piece of netting, it's a straight piece. Okay, so usually you can use it for a bracelet really well. Uh, here I also wanted a straight piece, obviously, because it's a V-shaped necklace. So I needed two pieces to go kind of like that. Okay, um, but if you're just doing a normal straight piece of netting, it's kind of difficult to get the join in the middle. Because if you imagine a straight piece of netting, you're going to have uh, an angle at the bottom there. So you somehow need to attach it to the other side then. So this netting, if you put it down straight, it finishes straight at the bottom. Actually, I think I've got it upside down. Uh, no, I've got it this way around. Here we go. So you can see in the center, there's a straight line there. So you can just carry on going in the other direction from there. So that's the inspiration behind this netting. Now, it is a little bit more complicated than your normal straight netting. So I've got this uh, cheat sheet written down. Now, I'm going to put it on the screen here for a second so that if you want to take a screenshot or if you want to take a photo of that or if you want to write it down, if you're copying it down, just make sure you take a note of the colours that I've used. Um, so I've used the green, green numbers, black numbers, and then some red as well because the colours will be important um, as we work through. And I'm going to show you how to use this cheat sheet because the numbers are very difficult to remember if you don't have it written down like this. So I'm going to show you, as I'm making the netting, I'm going to show you where I am on this sheet and how to follow it. Okay, so don't worry if it doesn't make much sense at the moment. Just make sure you have a copy of it somewhere. Right. So I'm going to put this piece aside for now. We'll get back to it later. The, the components I've added to the bicones, I just want to show you quickly. So I've got three uh, tubes of seed beads, size 11 seed beads, all my yukis. I've got a gold, I've got a green, and then I've got a uh, silver lined crystal. Obviously, you can use whatever colors you like because you've got so many colors in the necklace as well. I just went with the, the, the green and the silver sort of for the, for the base because that remind me, reminded me, as I said, of the leaves and the, and the drops of water. And then I went with the gold just to accent the flowers a little bit because it's kind of like a yellow, but it's a bit more shiny. Um, and then, of course, I've got my needles and then I've got, I've used eight pound fire line. You can use your wildfire as well because you're not going through the beads too many times. So it doesn't have to be a particularly thin thread. Eight pound, you could probably even use a 10 pound fire line. My favorite is usually a six pound, but in this case, I used the eight because I wanted it to be a little bit stiffer than, than with a six pound uh, fire line. And I've used a size 10, size 10 beading needle. Okay. And then just your, your basic findings, so a little bit of um, extension chain, which you may not need depending on how long you make your base, and then jump rings and a little clasp. Okay, so those are the, the bits that you will need to add to your bicones. So for the start of the netting, I'm going to start with using the green, green seed beads and the crystal or silver lined crystal. Okay. Then for my thread, now I've just got a short-ish piece of thread here because uh, for purposes of the demo, and I'm using black so you can see what I'm doing. In the actual necklace, I use the, the crystal. Um, but as I say, just so you can see it a bit better, I'm going to use the black here. Now for your thread, you want to cut a piece that is twice as long as what you would normally be comfortable using. So if you normally use a meter, cut two meters. If you normally use two full arm lengths, which is what I usually do, then cut four full arm lengths, okay? Then what you want to do is you want to take a stopper bead, so a bead that is a different color to what you're gonna be working with, just so you can recognize it easily. And you want to put it in the center of the extra long piece of thread that you have, okay? So you want to leave a tail that's as long as the piece that you're working with. Now don't be too precious about it, so if it's not exactly in the middle, it doesn't matter. 
The only reason we're doing this is because we're going to be working from the centre in one direction and then from the centre in another direction. And it basically saves you one join in the middle uh, of your thread. So have an extra, extra long tail because you can come back and you can use that um, later on. Okay, so thread one end of your thread obviously into your needle. Now we're going to start with our little cheat sheet. I'm going to move these to the side a little bit actually. So I folded it in half because there's a section at the bottom that says start the second, the second, I haven't folded it very well, start the second half here. So I folded that piece away because we don't need that now, we're just going to be working on one side for the moment. Okay, so I'll keep that on the side so you can see it. Okay, so in the beginning it says we're going to start in the center, right? We're going to pick up our stopper bead which we've already picked up, okay? Now, the colors that I've used here are important because my black numbers are going to be my silver line crystal seed beads, okay? My green numbers are going to be my green seed beads, okay? And the red C, that's a crystal, okay? Oh, I haven't taken any crystals off the strand yet. I'm going to need some of those, okay? And then also further down here where I've said, where, where I've said bottom turn and top turn, but I've colored it gr uh, red, is because these two sections have got a crystal in them and these two sections haven't got a crystal. So that's how I've used the colors uh, to help me with my little cheat sheet. So I'm going to cut this strand of crystals here. Okay, and I'm going to pick out some of the crystal clear ones because that's what I've used in the base. I'm gonna put all the colored ones to the side so, I mean, uh, as I say, there are so, so many colors here. You've got reds, you've got oranges, you've got teals, you've got uh, dark blues. You can see all the colors sort of coming together there. You could, you could also use a mixture of colors uh, for your base if that's what you wanted to do. You could use reds and, and uh, then they would kind of look like little flower buds even. So it's up to you really how you want to switch up the colors. This is just how I've chosen to do it but it's entirely up to you how you how you would want to use the colors and there are so many on here it's going to go a really long way so the colored ones I'm going to use a little bit later for my flowers okay so I'm just going to put the rest aside for the minute so I've got my seed beads ready I've got my cheat sheet and then I've got my crystals here so what we're going to start with if you follow the cheat sheet so we're going to pick up one of our crystal seed beads, okay? Then we're going to pick up two greens, a crystal, and two greens. So two greens, a crystal, and two greens, okay? Then we're going to pick up a crystal. Then we're going to pick up two greens, a crystal. Well, I'm going to say... I'm going to say a white because I don't want to get, uh, get you confused with the actual crystals that we'll be using. So I'm going to say a white and then two greens and then a white. And then we're going to pick up five greens. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then we can bring those down to our stopper bead for now. Okay. So that's what we've got so far. Then we're going to pick up one white, one crystal and one white. Okay. So that's my one white seed bead, my one crystal, and another white seed bead, okay? Now what you need to remember in the instructions is every time you pick up this combination where you have a crystal on your needle, we're gonna turn back. In the beginning here, I've written turn back. I haven't written it further down because you just need to remember every time you've picked up a crystal, you need to turn back, okay? So we're gonna bring the crystals down to our work here, okay? And then to turn, what we're going to do is we're going to skip over the last seed bead that we've picked up, because that's going to kind of be a stopper bead to stop everything falling off the needle. And we're going to go back through the crystal and the silver or the white seed bead after the crystal. Okay, we're not going up through any of the greens, just the crystal. Okay, so we're going to pull that tight. So that's going to be the bottom point of our necklace. Okay. Now we're going to go back to our sheet. So we've turned back. Now we're going to pick up five greens. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And now after every one of these little sections, so everywhere I've got a dash, we're going to go through 
the next available uh, silver seed bead. Um, in this first row, it's not quite like that, but further on, that's what's going to happen. So for now, I'm just going to show you how to do the first row, and then after that, we'll be following the pattern. So we're going to pick up the five, and then we're going to go through the very first available silver bead here. Okay, so just go back up through that. So the first row is a little bit different, so you'll just have to follow what I'm doing. Okay, so now in our instructions, we pick up two, one, two. So pick up two greens, a white, and two greens. Okay, and now we're going through. Now we're going to skip over one of the silver beads. Okay, and we're going to go into the next available one. So this first row is the only time where we're skipping over. Uh, a silver bead and then we're going to the next one. Normally we're going to the next available one but in this first row we're skipping over one and we're going into the next one just to get our netting started. Normally I'd be holding this up in my hand. I'm trying to hold it flat so you can see what I'm doing but I will put it back down once I've gone through. So there we go. So that's the little section we've added now, those five beads, okay? Uh, so that was those two there. Now we're gonna do the same again. So we're gonna pick up two greens and a silver and two greens, okay? And again, we're gonna skip over the next available silver bead and we're gonna go into the one after that. Okay, so this is the one that's right by your stopper bead now. Right, so that's what you should have to start off your netting. Okay, it's quite straightforward so far. So now we've done this first sec section here, which is your start. Now we're going on to the next section. So now what we're going to do now, sorry, no, we haven't finished the top section yet. We've only done up to here. Now we're going to pick up the next two greens. I thought it looked a little bit short. That's because we haven't finished the top section yet. So now we're going to pick up two greens and then we're going to pick up our crystals. Okay, so we're going to pick up a silver bead or a white bead, a crystal and a white bead. Okay, now remember what I said earlier, every time you pick up a crystal, you're going to turn back. So now we can bring our crystal down and then we're going to turn back the same way that we turned back at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to skip the very last bead that we picked up, the seed bead here. And we're going to go back down the crystal and the silver bead after the crystal. Okay. And we're going to pull our thread through. Right. So now we've got a little crystal at the top and we've got a little crystal at the bottom. And our thread is coming out here out of the silver bead that is just under our crystal. Okay. And then we've got one more step left here, which is to pick up two greens, a silver and two greens, okay? Now from here, we're gonna carry on what I said earlier, where we're gonna go into the next available silver bead. Now, what I mean by available is, can you see this silver bead here has got two strands of beads going into it, this top one here. It's got the left strand and it's got the right strand. The next silver bead down, if I separate it a little bit, you can see there's only one strand of beads going through that silver, okay? And then the next silver, again, has got two, two strands going through it. Okay, so we've used that bead twice, and the top bead we've used twice as well. This one here is the first available one, which we've only used once so far. So now we're going to go downwards through that one silver, which is the first one that is available, coming downwards. Use my fingers getting in the way, but you'll see. So now these, this is the five beads here that I've just added, and I've gone through this first available seed bead here. Okay, now we're done with this top section, so now we're continuing from the star. Okay, so now we're going to pick up our two one two combination again. So two greens, a silver, and two greens. Okay. And again, we're going to go through the next available one, which you can see the next one below our thread. This one here has got two strands going through it. Okay. This next one here has only got the one because if I separate them out, there's two next to each other and each one has got one strand going through it. So we're going through this one here, which is the next available one. So when I say available, what I mean is 
we've only used it once. Okay, so these are the five beads that I've just added on going through here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is if this was a straight piece of netting, obviously it would just carry on going up and down, up and down, up and down as we've been doing, and we'd grow our netting this way, okay? But as we wanted to uh, form a diagonal shape, if I just bring this back in again to show you the finished piece, right? So we wanted to start sort of moving upwards, okay? So what we're gonna do for that is we're gonna finish short of the bottom every time we come to the bottom, and we're gonna extend upwards every time we're at the top. Okay, so we basically want to be moving our netting up that way. So we've come to the bottom now. We haven't got any more silvers available here. Don't look at the ones that are attached to your crystals. So think of your crystals as, as a complete unit. So if you cover that up, you'll see we haven't got any more available silver beads here. So we've reached the bottom now, okay? But don't worry about keeping that in mind because if you just follow the instructions here, you will see when you've come to the bottom. So what we've done at the moment is this bit here. If I use a piece of paper to cover up the next row so you can see where we are. So that's where we are now. Now I've said we need to do a bottom turn. As I said before, we need to do a bottom turn up here because we want it to grow upwards. So we don't want to come down all the way to the bottom. So we're doing our bottom turn now. So for that, we're going to pick up six green beads. One, two, three, four, five, five, six green beads. We're going to pick up one white and we're gonna pick up two greens, okay? All right, bring those down. Now, as we're turning back upwards again, now we need to find the next available silver that we can go through or white, which if you have a look, this one we're coming out of, we've used that one twice because we've got two strands going through that one. So the next one up is this one here, which has only got the one strand of beads going through it. So that will be our next available one. Now, this time we're going through it from the bottom up because now we're traveling upwards. Okay, so we go through that one upwards. Try to keep your tension tight-ish. It doesn't have to be dead tight, just tight enough so you don't see any loose thread. Okay, so now we've made a turn at the bottom. Now we're traveling upwards. Okay, right, so we've done that one there. So now we go to the next row. Okay, now we're going to do the 212 again. So pick up two greens and a silver and two greens. Okay, then we look for the next available silver, which again, this next, very next one along has been used twice already. So that's not, not the available one. The one after that, which is nearly at the top, has only been used once. So that's the one that we need to go through. Okay, I'm just going to pick it up so I can get through it. Okay, pull your thread tight, so you've added your next little loop there. Okay, so now we need to do a top turn. Now, as I said before, we now need to extend this netting upwards to get that shape going upwards. So now we're going to pick up five greens. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to pick up a silver, and then we're going to pick up two greens. Oh, two greens, okay? So now we've picked up more beads than we normally do, okay? And then we haven't got a bead up at the top to go through. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn around, hands up. Okay, so we're turning back and we're looking for that first available bead again. Okay, so these are the ones I've just picked up here. So if you turn back, obviously the one we're coming out of, we've used that one twice already. One's going down and one's coming up. So the next one, this one here is the next one which is available, which we've only used once. So we're going down through that one. Now you want to make sure you keep your tension, especially when you're doing your turns, because obviously you're going down through a bead that you've only just recently added, so it's easy to pull it out of shape. So just make sure that your tension is quite nice and tight, okay? So we've just done this step here. So we're going down to the next one. Okay, so we're doing our 212 again. So two greens, a silver, and two greens. Okay, and then again, we're going through the next available. Now you'll see that's this one here on the side of your turn at the bottom. Because the very next one down from our thread, we've used twice. So the one below that is the next available one. So you want to go through this one here. 
Okay. Right. Now, to do our bottom turn, we're going to pick up two greens. One, two. Now, as I said before, the reason I've written this in red is because this row has a crystal in it, which will become important in a second. I will explain why. So I've picked up my two greens, then I'm picking up my crystals. So a silver, a crystal, and a silver. And then remember what I said before, as soon as you pick up a crystal, which we've done here, then you need to turn around in the opposite direction. So I'm bringing my crystal down to my work. And again, I'm skipping over the last bead and I'm going back up through the crystal and the silver bead. Okay? So every time you pick up a crystal, you need to do that. So now I've turned around and I'm going upwards again, but don't forget about this five here. Okay? So next we're picking up our five greens. One, two, three, four, five greens. And again, we're looking for the next available one. Now you'll see this next one here has been used twice. So that one's not available. The next one is available, this one up here. Okay, so you want to go through that one there. Which is why, this is why it's a really good idea to use two colors of your seed beads, because if they're all one color, it's much harder to see which one you need to go through. Okay, so we've finished with this row. So we'll go back to the next row, or we'll go down to the next row. We're starting with our 212 again. Don't forget these 212s at the beginning because it's quite hard to miss that when you're looking at the turns. So we've got our 212, okay? The next available one is this one here at the top. So we go through that one there. There we go, okay? Um, now we're doing our top turn, so we've picked up the two, one, two. So now the next one says pick up two, one, and then five, because now we're growing upwards, remember? So we pick up two greens, we pick up a crystal or a, a white seed bead, and then we're picking up five greens this time. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then we're picking up our crystal combination. So a white, a crystal, and a white. Okay. And again, remember, we've just picked up our crystal, so now we need to turn around. So bring this down to your work. Then we skip over that last seed bead. If you forget to skip over it and go back through, everything's going to fall off. Not everything, but the last lot of beads that you've picked up. So make sure you don't go back through that very last bead that you picked up. Just go through the crystal and the silver bead just under it. Okay, so now we've made our top turn. But don't forget this combination here at the end, which is your next bit that you need to add, which is a two, a one, and a two again. Okay. Now, coming down, our next available silver is this one here, under the five greens. Okay, so that's the one you need to go through this time. It's the same rule all the way through. This is your next available one that we've only used once before. So you want to go through that one there. Okay. Right, so now we've finished up to here. Now if you look at the next one, it says repeat from the star. So we need to go back to the top here. So we go back again to the top, okay? So again, we're gonna start with our two, one, two. So pick up two greens, a silver, and two greens, okay? And then again, we search for the next available one coming downwards, which is this one here. Then we do our bottom turn again, which is six, one, and two. So six greens, one, two, three, four, five. Six greens, a silver, and two greens. Okay. And then we turn, um, and then we haven't got anything else to go through here at the bottom. So we're turning back. Look for the first available one, which is this one here. See, I've got some thread showing there, so just pull your, your thread loose a bit and then pull it tight again, just to make sure that you take up that slack of thread there. Okay? So that was our bottom turn there. So next row becomes a top turn, but first we need to do the two, one, two. Two, one, two. Okay? And then again, we go through the next available silver, which is this one here. Now, I just want to show you quickly when you come up to a crystal like this, you might find that this is twisted around 
and suddenly you're missing your silver bead here. Okay, that's just because this top section has twisted around. So make sure that you turn it that way so that your steps are on the left. If I bring this one again, can you see the ones on the left, which are your um, little increases upwards, haven't got the silver bead in the middle, okay, which is that step there. So sometimes uh, you think you've gone wrong because you forgot to add a silver, but in the meantime, all it's done is flipped around. So just keep that in mind. So flip that back because that's our next available one now is this one here, just under, under the crystal. Not right under the crystal, but a little bit further down. So that one there, okay? Um, so that, that's our two, one, two in this step. Then we're gonna do a five and a one and two. So one, two, three, four, five, and then a one, and then a two. Okay, and we're turning now, so we're coming back. So this one here is our next available one, available silver one. So we go down through that one. So now we've done the turn there. So the next row, which is a bottom turn again. And then from here on, it's basically just repeating the same set of steps over and over again. So going to the next available one. Two, one, two, and then we're doing a turn again. So pick up two greens, then your silver, crystal and silver. Don't forget to turn after you pick up a crystal. So we've picked up a crystal, bring it down to the work, skip the last bead, go back through the crystal and the seed bead after. Okay. You can if you hold on to this little seed bead at the end, the one that you skipped over, it makes it easier to pull your thread tight. Okay, and then don't forget the five beads after that. So one, two, three, four, five, and then into the next available one. Okay, and then I'm just going to do this one here. So we've got our two, one, two again, two, one, two, into the next available one here. And then our crystal turn at the top, which will be two, one, five. So two, one, and then five greens. One, two, three, four, five greens. And then your crystal, so a silver, a crystal, and a silver. And again, don't forget, you need to turn back after your crystal. So skip over the first bead or the last one that you picked up go through the crystal and then the silver next to the crystal. So we're turning back. So this is our extension upwards again. And then don't forget the two, one, two. So that's two, one, two. And then into, now remember the next available one is this one here in this extension bit. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that's our 212. Now, a few other things I want to show you quickly. I'm going to switch over to the other piece, which is a bit longer, because I can talk about that one a bit easier. So this is exactly the same as what I've been doing. You just keep going and going and going. Now, for the necklace, the length I did was, uh, I carried on until I had 16 crystals at the top, um, which ended me up with, seven, well, the 16 crystals doesn't include the one in the middle, actually. So it was 17, including the one in the middle. Okay, and 18, including this one in the middle at the bottom. Okay, but it's up to you how many you, you continue with. Uh, let me just show you one more thing quickly. When, and no, in fact, I'll show you that on the other piece in a second. Right, so you just carry on until you have the length that you're looking for. Okay, when you get to whatever length you want it to be, you want to stop um, when just before you add your top crystal. So this is a top turn crystal. So you want to stop after these two, one, two. Okay. So this is where my crystal would go at the top so that I can just quickly show you how, how I did the loop at the top where I will attach my findings. So I'm just going to thread a needle onto here. So 
So then all I did was, instead of adding this combination of beads here, I just picked up eight of my green beads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of my green beads. And then I went back through that silver one that I'm coming out of. Okay, so that makes a little loop here. So you want to go through this loop a couple of times just to reinforce it a little bit, okay? So that's how you finish that end. The other thing I want to explain is if you lose your place where you are on this list, can you see there are two types of turns we do at the top and two types of turns, which you can see on the list as well. We've got a bottom turn, a bottom turn, top turn, and a top turn. So you're going to alternate. So you can see at the top here, we've got one turn here, which doesn't have a crystal. So that's this top turn. Then we've got a turn at the top which does have a crystal, so it's that one. Then you've got another turn which doesn't have a crystal, and then you've got a turn which does have a crystal, okay, which makes sense if you're going through this, you can see, because you do one of those, one of those, one of those, one of those. And the same thing at the bottom as well. So if you lose your place and you don't know where to carry on, if I go back to this one I had earlier, okay, let's say I come back down to the bottom here, and I lose my place, I don't know where to carry on from this list. I can see that the last turn I did at the bottom was a crystal turn, okay? So I know that my, so the red ones are the crystal turns. So now I know that my next turn needs to be one of these, which doesn't have a crystal. So that would be this one here. So that's where I would carry on with. Um, my next turn at the bottom will be one that doesn't have a crystal. And then when I get to the top again, so I've just done the crystal here. So my next top turn will be this row here which is the one that doesn't have the crystal. Okay, so if you get lost, that's how you find your place again. Okay, so now I'm just quickly gonna show you how to carry on in the opposite direction. So this is what we've been working on so far. Okay, so to flip it over, now you want to carry on in the other direction, obviously growing your base up that way. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna take off your stopper bead. Okay, and you want to thread this is the long tail thread we left at the beginning, remember? So you want to thread that into your needle after you've taken off your stopper bead. Now this is where this little bit at the bottom here comes in. It says to start the second half, this is what we're going to pick up to begin with. Okay, let me just put this somewhere where you can see it. So when you start going in the opposite direction, you want to start with this. So you want to pick up two greens, then you want to pick up your crystals. So pick up a silver, a crystal and a silver. And again, we've just picked up a crystal, so we need to turn around. Okay, so we skip over the top one and we go back down through the crystal and the seed bead, just as we've been doing before. Okay, and then we're going to pick up our two, one, two. Two, one white and two greens. Okay, and we're going to go through the next available one again, which is this one here. And then from here on, if you look at the cheat sheet, it says continue from the start. So you go back to your little cheat sheet here, and we're going to continue from here just as we've been doing up until now. Uh, so your next one will be your 212, 212 into the next available one. Okay, and then you're doing your bottom turn, which is your 612. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and a silver, and then two, and then again, you haven't got any silver beads underneath here that are available, and we're doing a turn anyway, so you, you know you've got to bring your beads down, and you're going to turn back up and go through the next available one, which is this one here in your work. Oh, just make sure your thread doesn't loop over your previous work and then you're just going to carry on again so it's your 212 and so on and so on and then your work will start growing in the other direction okay so that's basically how you make the base okay 
So now I'm going to put that aside because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to show you how to make the flowers now. And the flowers are really easy and it really only takes maybe a couple of minutes to make a flower. So those are the flowers there. I've made a few up beforehand. So all I did was I picked out, you need six uh, crystals that are the same color. You could do them different colors if you wanted to. They don't have to all be in uh, the same color. But let's say I'm going with uh, all the same colors. Let me just get a piece of thread. I haven't got any thread in my needle. Okay. Now for this, you, um, you really only need about probably 20 centimeters of thread um, for a flower. But obviously, it's easier if you just thread whatever length you're used to working with. And then you make a flower, you cut off your thread, and then you make your next flower. So without having to thread your needle every time. So just take however much thread that you're comfortable working with. Then I'm going to take out my gold seed beads. Okay. You could use silver ones here if you didn't want to use the gold, but I thought the, the gold added a bit of extra um, interest there. So now we're going to pick up six of our gold seed beads. You don't need to stop a bead here. So we're just picking up six seed beads. Uh, six. This is going to make a six petal flower. You could make a five petal flower as well if you wanted to use odd numbers. But I thought the six petals just added that many more crystals to, um, to the piece. Now we're going to go through all six of these again. So I've left enough of a tail that I can hold on to it like that, okay, which makes your work easier to do. And also because you haven't added a stopper bead, it, uh, it helps if you can hold on to that thread. So I'm coming around in a circle. I'm going through all six of these beads a second time. Okay, and I'm going to go through the first two a third time. Okay, so I've come around in a circle and go through the next two as well. So when you pull that tight, it comes together into a flower shape, just like that. Okay, now we're going to add our crystals. So my thread is coming out of the seed bead here. I'm going to pick up a crystal. I'm going to pick up a gold seed bead. Okay, I'm going to bring them down. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just like we did on the netting, I'm going to skip over this seed bead at the end. I'm going to go back through the crystal, and then I'm going to go through the next seed bead in my little base flower. So my thread is coming out of this one. I'm going through the next one along. Okay, and when you pull that tight, that creates your first little petal. Okay, then you do the same again. So pick up a crystal and pick up a seed bead, bring them down. Okay, keep holding onto your tail thread because that will help to keep your tension. Okay, then skip over the seed bead, go through the crystal and through the next seed bead in your base. Okay, and as you can imagine, we're going to do the same thing over again. We're going to do it six times to add our six little petals. Okay, that's my third one through the next seed bead. So you keep going around like that. Pick up your next crystal. So for the finished necklace, I've made 26 of these little flowers, which is a bit of a random number, but I just kind of kept going until, um, well, until I ran out of time, really. Um, <laughs> you know, you could make as many of these flowers as you wanted to. As I said, you could cover the whole necklace with flowers. You could uh, just add a few sort of um, interspersed or you could do half of it like I did. It's totally up to you how many of the flowers you want to add. And then the last one. Just bring down the last one. So you do the same thing with the last one again. You go over the seed bead through the crystal and then you go through the next seed bead along in your base. Okay, so that's your flower essentially finished, okay? And then what I did was bring your tail thread up to the top so you can see which seed bead it's coming out of. It's coming out here. So I'm going to make my way around the center seed beads until I meet up with my tail thread. So I need to go through about, I think, four seed beads in the middle because we went through two to start with. So that's three there. Yes, so you need to go through four of your seed beads to get back to where your tail thread is. 
Okay? So now both my tail thread and my working thread are coming out between the same two seed beads. They're coming out at the base of this petal here. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two threads and I'm going to tie uh, a surgeon's knot. So a single knot, just like that. And then do a surgeon's knot, which is just a normal knot where you go over the top, then you go through the loop, and then you go through the loop a second time just to make it a little bit stronger. And then you pull your knot down to where your little flower is. Okay? So that's your little flower made. And then it's just a case of uh, you want to go through a couple more beads with your thread before you cut it off, just so that you don't cut your thread off right by the knot, because that's when there's a, a chance it'll come undone. So what I did was, um, and you don't have to do it the same as I did, I just went through two of the middle beads again, um, and then I came out through a crystal so that my thread is kind of accessible and then you can just cut it off or you can use your thread zapper. Just If you're using your thread zapper, make sure you don't accidentally cut the thread that is holding your flower together. Okay? And then you're going to do the same thing with the tail. I'm just In this case, I'm just going to cut the tail off so that it's not in the way. But you would put a needle onto your tail thread, weave it in a little bit, and then cut it off as well. Okay, so that's another one of your little flowers made. So that's how you make the flowers. As I said, I made 26 for the full necklace. Okay? And then what you're going to do, so you've got your, your base necklace here. Um, you finish off all your threads, you finished off all the threads on your flower and on your necklace. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to finish off the thread because just for the interest of, uh, of the demo, because I need a thread just there anyway. Uh, this thread is caught up in my needle. Give me a second. Right, I need it to release a free needle. So I'm just going to put my needle back on this thread so I can show you how to attach the flowers. Now this is where it becomes really simple. This is why I did the flowers separately. So after you've finished off your threads, take a new thread and attach it somewhere near. So this is the bottom center point of my necklace. So attach your thread somewhere near the bottom center here. If you're attaching your flowers just to one side, you can start at the end if you want to cover the whole thing. But I just wanted one side, so I attached a new thread at the bottom here, okay? The way I did that was I just went through a few beads and then I did a half hitch knot, which I'll show you in a second how to do when I finish off this thread. And then I went through two more beads and then did another couple of half hitch knots just until your thread is secure and it's attached somewhere in the bottom here. I did it quite randomly. Um, so, I mean, you can see I just kind of sort of arranged the flowers like that. And then obviously I took them all off again when I, I kind of um, thought I had enough flowers and then I just attach them really quite randomly. So what you want to be doing is for your thread to be coming out of one of your silver beads, okay? Doesn't matter which one, you'll see how you want to arrange your flowers. So in this case, my thread is coming out of this silver bead here, okay? So to attach a flower, what I did was I picked out some yellow crystals, some beautiful yellows in here, okay? Then all you're going to do is you're going to pick up a flower, you're going to go through the hole in the center that you created with those six seed beads, okay? Then you're going to pick up a yellow crystal, you're going to pick up a gold seed bead, okay? Bring them down. And again, just as we've been doing up until now, you skip over this last seed bead, which becomes your stopper. You go back through your crystal, and then you go back through your flower as well, okay? So I haven't pulled my thread tight at the moment. Then you're going to go back into your work in the same place where you came out. Now, you can either go downwards, you can go upwards. There are different directions you can go from here. So think about where you want to put your next flower. So if you imagine the center of your flower is going to be where your thread is coming out of. So my flower, when it comes down here, is going to sit like that. So I can have a look and see where I want to place my next flower. So I want to put one right down here at the bottom, let's say. So I want to be coming out of this silver bead next, okay? So I'm going to go back into my work. As I say, it doesn't matter which direction you go back in. You just go back in, in the same place where you're coming out, and you travel through your work until you're coming out of the silver bead where you want to add your next flower, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to pull this tight carefully. So hold on to this little gold seed bead. That's your stopper bead. And then you pull your thread, and that brings everything in that attaches your flower to your netting like that. Okay? So now my thread is coming out of this silver bead here, which is where I wanted to put my next flower. 
So I'm doing the same thing again. I pick up a flower, go through the flower. I pick up a crystal and then I pick up a gold seed bead. Okay, bring them down again and again. I'm going to skip over the seed bead, go back through the crystal, go back through the flower. Okay, I'm going to just pull my needle through, but I'm not pulling it tight just yet. Because you could pull it tight, but then your flower would be sitting here and it makes it difficult to get back into your work again. So just leave your flower to the side at this point and then go back into your work and just think about, you can use another flower if you want to imagine where that's going to be. Think about where you want your next one to be. So I want it to be, let's say, over here. So again, I'm going to go back into my work and I'm going to travel along my seed beads until I'm coming out of the silver bead. And as I say, I did it quite randomly. So I didn't, um, then you're going to pull it tight again. So hold on to the gold bead and then pull it in like so. So I did it quite randomly. I didn't, I didn't pick out and say, okay, all of the seed beads and silver beads in this row or all of the silver beads that are just above a crystal. I didn't do it anything like that. I just randomly looked at it and I thought, well, this is where I want my next flower to be. Uh, and that was it. So again, pick up your flower and your crystal and your seed bead, bring them down, skip over the seed bead, go back through the crystal. Again, if you forget to skip over the seed bead, your flower is going to fall off your thread. So don't forget that. Okay, and then again, you work out where you want your next flower, you go back in in the same place and you travel along to the next spot. And I just carried on like that until I've attached as many flowers as I wanted there to be on my necklace. So if I bring the necklace over so you can see I'm starting to attach my flowers just like that. Okay. Now this netting, and I'll show you on the necklace in a second as well, just because it's at an angle like that, if you just do a section like that without a turn, it also works really nicely as a bracelet, just like that without any flowers even. Or if I bring the necklace over, I can show you. So this is the section with the flowers on. So you can see that's how I've attached all my flowers there. So if you had just the section with the flowers on, that makes a really beautiful bracelet as well. And as I say, you have enough in the, um, in the strand. I mean, I've, for this demo, I've hardly touched the strand. You've got plenty enough there to make a matching bracelet as well. Um, you can also make some earrings. You could just take one of these and you can um, att maybe attach a couple of them to each other and have that dangling as an earring, or you can just hang this straight off your shepherd's hook and just have a little flower dangling as an earring. So you've got lots of options there. Um, and as I say, it takes minutes to make one of the flowers. And actually, after, I've made, after I'd made all the flowers, all 26 of them, I had a big bundle of flowers, and it was just so pretty just to look at the flowers themselves. So um, there are so many things you can do with the flowers. This is just one example, attaching them to a, a netting like this. Uh, you could make a choker if you, if you did just a straight piece of netting and attach the flowers like that. It would make a beautiful choker as well. Um, you could attach this to uh, a candle. You could put it around the base of a candle. Um, there are so, so many things you can do with these crystals. You can make beady beads with them. You can, I mean, you can see, I mean, it just keeps going and going and going. I actually, uh, I worked out, I didn't count them, but I worked out there should be around 500 crystals on this strand. And if you imagine for one flower, I used six. So, uh, you know, you can make almost 100 flowers uh, just from this one strand. So I would say that for this necklace, if I work out uh, the 26 flowers, I probably used about half of the strand to make the necklace. So, um, so as I say, you can either make two necklaces or you could fill up the whole necklace with flowers, which I think would also look amazing. You could also, if you wanted to, you could make your netting wider. So all you have to do then is add in an extra step where I put the two, one, two beads in. So add in an extra step to make it a bit wider if you wanted a wider necklace. Uh, you could also leave off the crystals if you didn't want to add the crystals to the edge and you wanted to save your crystals for something else. So, I mean, because over here where you've got the flowers, you can't see a lot of these crystals on the side. So if you wanted to be even more sparing with your crystals, you could leave off the ones off the side 
in this section. I do think it looks nice because you still have those little dew drops in between your flowers um, if you have them on the edge like this. But as I say, it's completely up to you to change the design however you like. And then as you can see on the back, all I did was I made the two little loops as I showed you um, on this piece here. Not that piece, uh, I did the loop here. So you can see there, I've made this little loop, reinforced it a couple of times, and then you can just put a jump ring through your little loop and through your clasp, you can use whatever clasp you like. I've added a little bit of a, an extension chain because I like to add extension chains because you never know what sort of a top you're going to be wearing your necklace with. You might want it quite tight up against your necklace, I mean, your neck, so I usually make my necklaces quite short to sit quite up close to my neck and then I add and extend, extend the chain. So if I have a top on that is uh, quite low cut, then I can make it a bit longer uh, and I can vary it that way. And especially if you're doing a bracelet, it would help also to have an extended chain uh, because you don't know how long um, uh, somebody's wrist is. You don't know if you want to wear it down here or you want to wear it further up. Um, so. Yeah, there's just so many things you can do with these crystals. So I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial and I hope you can uh, follow it along. Uh, if you have any issues or any questions about how to do any part of it, you're welcome to message me on my Facebook page or um, through Jewelry Maker and I will be very happy to help you out with any, uh, any questions that you might, um, that you might have. Uh, so we're just going to go to a quick break now and then we'll be joined by the lovely Al, yay, <laughs> um, with all the rest of the goodies and I've got two more demos to go to show you um, later on. So I hope you'll join us. Thank you. Hello Jewelry Maker, John Scott here. Just wanted to wish you a very, very happy birthday. 13 years, my word, 13 years, you've not had me on enough, have you? I'll see you very soon. Have a fantastic 13 days. Happy birthday, Jewelry Maker. From the Hobby Maker team. Happy birthday, Jewelry Maker. 13 years of crafting your own gemstone jewelry. And I know this birthday celebration, there's even more exciting gemstones to come. Happy birthday.